These new lenses will change cataract surgery forever. The annual American Society for Cataract and Refractive Surgery Conference was held recently in sunny San Diego, and there was a lot of buzz among eye surgeons about the exciting new intraocular lens technology in the pipeline. I love these conferences because going to them is like stepping into the future. At these meetings, eye surgeons, medical device companies, and researchers all come together to share the latest innovations that will be available to our patients in the next five to 10 years. In this video, I'm gonna give you an insider's look at the exciting lens technology to come in the future. By the way, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist with Pointe Hills Eye Care, and I make videos to help you see better, look better, and feel better. First, let me explain the problem that these new lenses are designed to solve. When we're all younger, such as in our teens and 20s, our eyes have the ability to autofocus. So for example, if we're looking at something far away then want to focus on something up close, we have the ability to change the power of the lenses inside our eyes to adjust our focus. We all have a special muscle inside our eyes called the ciliary muscle. And as we change our focus, the ciliary muscle contracts and relaxes. The ciliary muscle is connected to the lens by several small hair-like structures called the zonules. As the ciliary muscle contracts and loosens, it pushes and pulls on the lens, causing the lens to change its shape and also its focusing power. This process is called accommodation. As we all age, we lose the ability of autofocus or accommodation. This is called presbyopia. Most people begin to develop presbyopia around age 40. And that's why as we all get to our 50s and older, we need reading glasses to see things up close. Even after cataract surgery, in which the natural lens is removed and replaced by an artificial intraocular lens, we still don't regain our ability of accommodation after surgery because that new intraocular lens that was placed in your eye is rigid and wasn't designed to change its shape or power. And so it can become quite inconvenient for people who have received cataract surgery to try to do things that require near vision, like reading a menu or prescription bottle, putting on makeup, or looking at their cell phone, because they'll constantly have to reach for a pair of reading glasses. Now, we currently have special lenses like multifocal lenses and extended depth of focus lenses that give people a larger range of vision. That is, these lenses help them see both distance objects and near objects more clearly. Although most patients are satisfied with these lenses, these lenses also have some drawbacks that we need to consider. Since these multifocal and extended depth of focus lenses basically split the light coming into the retina to provide a larger range of vision, the overall sharpness of a patient's vision can be reduced slightly. Patients will also see rings or starbursts around lights after these lenses are implanted. Another technique we eye surgeons use to try to give patients more range of vision is what's called monovision, or basically we have one eye set for distance vision and another eye set for near vision. When both eyes work together, then patients have a larger range of vision without needing reading glasses. Monovision also has its own drawbacks too, because patients with monovision can have decreased depth perception, and some people can't really tolerate the difference in the prescription between the two eyes. Sometimes they'll report feeling dizzy or nauseous. So although our current options for giving patients more range of vision after cataract surgery are okay, they're far from perfect. And so the holy grail right now for refractive cataract surgery is to design a lens that gives patients the full range of vision, allowing them to see near, intermediate, and distance vision without compromising overall vision quality and minimizing other side effects. And so far, we haven't found the perfect solution, but these exciting new lenses are going to bring us closer to this goal than ever before. So let's dive in. The Juveen Intraocular Lens or IOL is a modular shape-changing intraocular lens undergoing clinical trials. And as we discuss all of these different lenses, remember that there are two components of a basic intraocular lens. There's the central optic portion, which is basically the part that allows the lens to bend and refract light. It gives the lens its focusing power. And then there's the haptic portion, which are basically the arms that hold the lens in place. And so as we go through these lenses, you'll see how researchers have made modifications to the basic design of optics and haptics in these newer generations of lenses. So the Juveen intraocular lens comprises a base haptic with a fixed power lens, which goes inside the capsule and a shape changing fluid lens, which docks into the base. The base haptic is initially implanted in the capsule of bag, followed by the fluid lens. Because of its shape changing fluid lens, the Juveen IOL can respond to changes from the ciliary muscle. That is, as the ciliary muscle contracts and relaxes, the fluid IOL changes its shape in response, which allows the focusing power to shift as well. This allows the lens to deliver continuous vision from distance to intermediate to near. In a three-year study, the Juveen IOL demonstrated safety and efficacy. Patients achieved uncorrected vision of 2018 at distance, 2025 at intermediate, and 2035 at near when it was implanted in one eye, and the results were even better when it was implanted in both eyes. These lenses have already been in place in some people's eyes for three years, and the Juveen surgeons and researchers have reported that these impressive results have been maintained all three years after the surgery. And so what we're seeing with this lens is a great range of vision with no significant loss of contrast or sharpness and no significant halos or glares. Okay, the next lens we'll discuss is the OmniView IOL. The OmniView IOL is another accommodating lens currently in the clinical trial phase. This IOL features a modular design, comprising a fixed power front optic and a shape-changing base 
filled with fluid. The fluid-filled base of the OmniView IOL allows it to change its shape in response to movement by the ciliary muscle. This gives patients a wider range of vision. During the 2023 ASCRS annual meeting, Dr. George Waring presented preliminary findings from a first in-human trial involving 18 patients and 25 eyes. The results were pretty impressive. Six months after implantation of the OmniView lens, patients achieved one eye uncorrected vision outcomes of 2020 vision at distance, 2025 at an intermediate range, and 2032 for near vision. For the patients who had the OmniView lens implanted in both eyes, the uncorrected vision results were even better. They enjoyed 2016 distance vision, 2020 intermediate vision, and 2032 near vision. This demonstrated the lens's ability to provide excellent vision across various distances. The OmniView IOL is still in the early stages of development, but it also holds the potential to be a significant breakthrough in giving patients a wide range of vision, from near to intermediate to distance, with limited visual side effects like glare, halo, or decreased sharpness. And what you probably notice with these new lenses as I go through them is that they all have a similar design principle. They leverage small movements from the ciliary muscle to cause changes in the shape and focusing power of the implanted artificial lenses, to provide patients a wider range of vision while minimizing side effects. In essence, these lenses are designed to try to recreate our natural accommodation reflex. And there's a lot of competition in this space of creating a lens that allows us to regain our ability of accommodation because it's an important problem that we eye doctors need to solve. So hopefully with time, we'll see one or two of these lenses pan out and deliver on their company's promises. And full transparency, I have zero financial relationship with any of these lens companies. I'm just excited to share the latest research with you. And hopefully as long as they demonstrate adequate safety, I'll have these lenses in my hands sometime in the next few years to offer them to my own patients. By the way, if you like videos like this one, consider subscribing to my optimized newsletter to get the latest science-backed information on how to improve your vision and health delivered straight to your email. You can visit my website, michaelchuamd.com to sign up. Okay, back to the new lenses. The Gel EC IOL is another new IOL in the pipeline which aims to help patients regain their ability of accommodation. It consists of a stable posterior portion and in the front of the lens is a flexible portion that can change its shape. The lens is inserted into the capsule and has these eight springy connectors which they call actuators. When the capsule moves in response to the pushing and pulling from the ciliary muscle, the capsule pushes on those actuators, causing the front portion of the lens to change its shape and power. This allows it to focus light for different distances. The Jelly C lens has already been implanted in 10 patients in El Salvador and new studies are underway to investigate the safety and efficacy of the lens. The Fluid Vision IOL is another accommodating IOL under development. In this lens, there's a hollow central optic and on the outer edges of the lens are haptics filled with fluid. As the ciliary muscle contracts and relaxes, the capsule pushes on those fluid-filled haptics, pushing fluid into the central optic. This movement of fluid causes the optic to change its shape and focusing power. There are several completed and ongoing multi-center studies investigating this lens, such as the Orion study. Preliminary results from the Orion study are encouraging, demonstrating excellent distance, intermediate, and near visual acuity. Now, although all these new lenses have shown promising results, we need to temper our expectations and wait to see how they do in real world settings. For example, the first and last accommodating lens that has been approved by the FDA in the United States is the Crystal Lens, which was approved in 2003. The Crystal Lens featured these flexible haptics that supposedly allowed the lens to move forward to mimic accommodation. The Crystal Lens had positive results in clinical trials, and when it was first launched, the marketing claims from manufacturers and also eye surgeons was that it would deliver a great range of vision with minimal side effects. But as the crystal lens was implanted in real world settings after its FDA approval, eye surgeons and patients started to notice problems popping up. One problem with the crystal lens was that it didn't deliver the full range of vision, that is near, intermediate, and far vision that patients and surgeons had hoped for. And so many eye surgeons needed to plan for a little mini monovision when they used the crystal lens, that is to make one eye set for distance and the other eye set to see closer objects. And this was the only way they could deliver a larger range of vision with these lenses. The other problem with the crystal lens was that in several reported cases, as the capsule scarred down around the lens, the crystal lens unfortunately could move and tilt inside the eye. You see, in typical IOLs, the haptics are a little bit more rigid. So when the capsule naturally scars around the lens, the lens is still rigid enough to maintain its shape and position in the eye. The problem with the crystal lens was that because of its flexible haptic design, as the capsule scarred down around the lens, since the haptics weren't strong enough to keep the lens in place, the lens could either get tilted or pushed forward or backward, leading to poor vision requiring either laser or further surgery to try to fix the problem. And so, although the crystal lens had so much promise as an accommodating lens, it really has fallen out of favor with most eye surgeons because it hasn't been able to live up to its promise. And what you probably notice with all these new lens designs that are currently being developed is that they all feature some flexible component which allows the lens to respond to movements of the capsule and ciliary muscle to deliver basically pseudo accommodation to patients. As we saw with the crystal lens though, is that this flexibility can also have unintended consequences like instability of the lens inside the eye, which can cause poor vision. And so researchers and eye surgeons are taking the lessons they've learned with the crystal lens and are continuing to design and study these new lenses that 
hopefully will finally provide a great range of vision with good stability and a great safety profile as well. And I'm going to remain cautiously optimistic that one of these companies will finally figure it out and deliver a lens that will truly change cataract surgery forever. And of course, if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County or Inland Empire area and wanna get your eyes checked out or to get a cataract surgery evaluation, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Planet Hills Eye Care. See you next time.